Our final guest this evening is a man who many of us have been introduced to through his famous picture of the three New York firefighters raising the American flag at ground zero after the tragedies of September 11, 2001. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Thomas E. Franklin. How are you, Mr. Franklin? How are you? How are you? Good. Mr. Franklin, how did you become interested in photojournalism? Um, kind of by accident. I uh, was studying fine art photography at Purchase College in Westchester, New York, and um, by my junior year I was getting a little concerned about how I was going to make a living. So I uh, got a job working in a dark room at a local newspaper, and uh, I kind of fell in love with uh, a lot of the photographers there, and the business, and newspapers, and uh, I just kind of learned by osmosis. What kind of assignments were you doing before your work at the Bergen Record? Um, I've, I've covered a lot of uh, big events, uh, a lot of news, a lot of sports, a lot of professional sports, uh, some celebrity portraiture, still life, uh, food. Um, I've covered uh, a lot of different stuff. And how did you get involved with the Bergen Record? Uh, well, they don't like to be called the Bergen Record. It's oh. actually the record okay. uh, of Bergen <laughs> County. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to the record <laughs> of Bergen County. And uh, I started working with the record in 1993. And uh, um, so I've been there, you know, almost uh, nine years now. And uh, I like it a lot. And what are your responsibilities? What do you uh, photo shoot? Do you shoot the same sort mm -hmm. of things with the Bergen Record that you did before? Well, I cover, you know, any, any kind of pictures that you see in the newspaper or something that I might cover. I'm one of ten photographers on staff, but, you know, a normal week might have me covering a, a Jets game. Um, for example, today I had a photo assignment at the Meadowlands. We're doing a story about the chef and the, the caterers who prepare the food for the restaurants as well as the, uh, the special boxes. So it could be just about anything. Um, you know, the, the more glamorous stuff, uh, would be, you know, I've covered presidents, I've covered, you know, celebrities, I've, um, I've traveled to, to foreign countries, and uh, I've done a lot of fun things. Do you have any favorite, um, like, subjects that you like to photograph? Uh, I like meeting people. You know, I think that's the best part about being a photojournalist is that, uh, one, you get, you get in the door at a lot of places that you normally wouldn't get into. Mm -hmm. You get to meet people that you ordinarily wouldn't meet. Um, and you get to experience things uh, up close. And uh, it's, I think it's a real privilege to be a photojournalist, and you know, especially today, you know, when uh, there's so many important things going on. So I guess to answer your question, I, 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 I kind of like covering you know, a lot of different things, and the variety is what is really interesting to me. On September 11th, what were you supposed to be doing? I had just gotten back from a trip to the Dominican Republic where I was working on a story about baseball. And uh, you might recall that whole Little League World Series scandal yes. a couple years ago. And at the time, I thought that was about the biggest story there was. <laughs> I was in the office early that morning preparing for a meeting. And an editor had come running into the photo department saying a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. Well, from the record, we can see the New York skyline. And I remembered uh, getting into the elevator and seeing you know, the World Trade Center with this huge gaping hole on the side. So uh, I drove down to Jersey City and, you know, I just recorded everything, all the events that day. What was your initial reaction to being told that you have to go and shoot this? Well, no one said you have to go. I mean, that's, that's what you do as a photojournalist. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's your job. And, you know, when there's a big story like that, you know, you react and you just kind of, you know, something kicks in and whether it's, you know, from your training or um, from your, you know, desire to, to do what you do well, you respond. And I, I went down to Jersey City. Uh, we had photographers who were in New York already. They were responding from New York and I figured I would go down to Jersey City and shoot uh, from across the river. So that's what I did. We have some slides, some photos that you shot. And we're going to take a look at them now. And if you don't mind narrating over sure. them, what we're seeing. Well, I'm not sure if anyone's ever seen this picture before. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the three firemen raising the flag. The picture was make, made at 5.01 PM on September 11th. And a lot of people have asked me um, how I set up this picture. And this picture was not set up. It was a complete um, unceremonial uh, act. 
uh, the three firemen uh, saw that flagpole sticking out of the rubble, and one of the firemen had seen the flag on a yacht a couple of blocks away, and he got the idea to, to raise a flag up that pole, so he grabbed these, took the flag off the, the yacht, and brought it to that spot, and he raised the flag, and the whole flag raising took less than two minutes. I don't think I had any idea I was taking their picture or it was being recorded or that anyone was even watching it. In fact, they didn't even know that there was a picture of this, the three firemen I'm talking about, mm -hmm. until it ran on the front page of the New York Post uh, on Thursday of that week, so two days later. Okay. This is one of the pictures uh, from Jersey City. I was at Exchange Place uh, where I literally witnessed both those towers collapsing. This picture was made shortly after the first tower collapsed. And uh, someone had told me that that, that was about 5,000 feet away, the distance across the river from Exchange Place to the World Trade Center. And 5,000 feet is not that, not that great a distance, yet those tower collapsed in complete silence from there. And um, it was just so hard to believe. They had a triage center set up at Exchange Place, and they were bringing a lot of the injured and, s and the survivors over by boat. And uh, this picture was made uh, sometime around 10.30 that morning, and it's an injured fireman being rushed to an ambulance. This picture was made shortly after the second tower collapsed, and this woman had gotten off one of the boats. She was evacuated from Manhattan. And her expression pretty much, you know, summed up you know, how everybody felt there. It was just so hard to believe and you had this incredibly dramatic scene of injured people coming off the boats with this you know just surreal background of New York City and smoke and flames it right. was you know I think my pictures are good but they don't come close to really describing what it was like this is one of the injured evacuees around uh, one o'clock um, I was able to talk my way onto a boat with another photographer, uh, and this picture was made uh, on that boat heading to the city uh, sometime after one o'clock. And I think it was a pretty important picture for me because looking at this picture, you can imagine you know some of the things that were going through my mind heading towards that. You know, what was I getting into? What was I going to see? You know, I hadn't heard a lot of the television and radio reports that most of you had heard because I was out on the street shooting. And I'm, I'm thinking there are tens of thousands of people dead, and, uh, you know, I was really pretty, um, you know, I had to remind myself to focus on my job and not really think about, uh, you know, some of the things that I might be seeing. This was one of the first pictures I made uh, when I got to Ground Zero. That's the, uh, in the upper left corner, you can see the, uh, the shell of what was the World Trade Center. Same thing, just that skeletal frame, World Trade Center. This is the West Side Highway. This is uh, looking north. Uh, actually, it's called West Street. I everyone think everyone always called it the West Side Highway. And that, that you know, massive you know, array of rubble there is all the highway there. And on the on the right side, the upper right, is where the plaza of the World Trade Center was. You know, and uh, this is a close up of of one of the towers. You know, I, I tell people, you know, in looking at these pictures, I've never, you know, I've never covered war, but this is what I imagine war looked like. It mm -hmm. was, it was so unbelievable. Uh, virtually nothing was recognizable. You know, I'd been down to the World Trade Center hundreds of times, and uh, nothing was recognizable. This was about a block and a half uh, away from the World Trade Center, and you could see, you know, all this uh, debris that was just, um, you know, exploded out of those buildings. Uh, you know, office papers and personal letters and photographs and such. This is another photographer looking out some of the windows that were blown out in a building adjacent to the World Trade Center. Around, uh, this is an important picture because around uh, a quarter to five in the afternoon on the 11th, uh, word started to spread around the ground area that World Trade Center building number seven was going to collapse, and that's that tall building in the in the direct center of the picture, the kind of pinkish building. Okay. That building fell about a half hour after I made this picture, and this is one of the last rescue workers evacuating the Ground Zero area before the building collapsed. And it's important because the rescue workers and the firemen all evacuated the Ground Zero area, and I did the same. 
and there was a there was a uh, a first aid stand a couple of blocks away, and it was at that point that I was looking at my watch and looking at uh, I only had a couple of frames left in my digital camera, and I decided I would shoot the remaining frames I had left, shoot them, and then head back to New Jersey with all the pictures I had made that day. So I figured I'd walk back to Ground Zero to shoot those pictures, and in doing so, that's when I saw the three firemen raising the flag, and uh, it was a whole series of events that you know were kind of you know, I don't, you know, it just kind of fell into place for me to make that picture. Okay. The picture itself, how does it feel to have taken a picture that has such a deeper meaning and significance for a world full of people? Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty heavy stuff, you know. I don't, I don't really think about it in those terms. I mean, I think people see this picture, uh, in their own terms, you know, and it, what it means to them. And people have expressed to me what it means to them, and that's been really pretty humbling, overwhelming, uh, unbelievable. I mean, I've received literally tens of thousands of phone calls, emails, and letters from people who are telling me things like that. And that's, you know, it's pretty unbelievable that, you know, something that I did, you know, affected people in such a great way. But, you know, I really, it's really hard for me to, uh, to, um, to analyze it, you know, because it's it's really something that's that goes way beyond me. You know, the picture has taken on a life of its own, and it's out there and it's you know doing its thing, and you know I'm just kind of a part of it. To, to you personally, what does the picture mean? The picture means that, well, it's kind of hard to, to to define what it means because it's done so much. I mean, it's raised millions of dollars for charity. It's uh, appeared on a postage stamp, which raises more money for charity. It, uh, it's going to be, you know, on countless uh, pieces of merchandise, legally and illegally, but some of which is going to raise more money. And, you know, like I said, people have sent me, you know, literally tens of thousands of correspondences telling me how much this picture means to them. So I think it's meant a lot to a lot of different people, and that's really what the picture's about. You touched upon illegal uses of the picture. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about cashing in on your picture, your work? Mm. Well, it's a very uh, complicated question because I don't own the picture. The record owns the picture and they essentially could do whatever they want with it. Um, but they have formed a committee which I'm a part of and as a group of about five people we um, try to make decisions on what uh, merchandise or proposals are appropriate. And there have literally been thousands and thousands of proposals that the record's gotten. Everything from, you know, bizarre things like cigar humidors and wine labels and cornfield mazes and pumpkin carvings and, you know, all these bizarre things that we, that I personally feel is inappropriate. But there are things like posters and a couple of uh, figurines. And in fact, I think I might be able to add to your collection here if you'd like. Oh, I, I have a few yeah. back to your office. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> To answer your question, to answer your question, I think it's wrong that people are ripping it off because uh, the picture really is about thousands of people who died. It's not about making money. And some people have made money, and I've made a little bit of money, even though I don't own the picture. Uh, the record has made a little bit of money, but most of the money has gone to charity, and I think that's what uh, the picture should be used for the most. What changes have taken place in your life as a result of your work on September 11th? Well, I was asked to be a guest on Hackensack Talks. <laughs> um, well, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, well, a lot of, it's brought me a lot of attention personally. Um, you know, I've got to do some pretty neat things. I, I was a guest at the White House. I got to meet the President. I got to, uh, um, I've been on television a lot, um, and so, you know, I guess it, it's kind of made me, you know, a little bit more of a popular person. But to me, it's not, the picture's not about me, it's about the thousands of people who died, and, you know, the thousands of people who died, you know, in the most horrible way imaginable, you know, some who died trying to save others. And that's really what the picture's about, so every time I, you know, start to think about how great I am, <laughs> you know, I think about, you know, what the picture's really about. Thank you. Mr. Franklin, you've been a wonderful guest. Thank you for coming on the show. Yes, yes. I wish you all of the success in your future endeavors.